D-Wave stock is up roughly 167% this year, more than 700% in the last 12 months, and is still trading around 22 bucks. And you guys are all asking me, can the stock get to $50, $60, or even $70? Or are we staring at a drop that nobody's pricing in? I ask because this is the first company to ever sell a commercial quantum computer. And they just cleaned up their entire warrant structure while pulling in new government momentum. But there's a signal that's buried in their recent filings that could decide whether this stock keeps Climbing or hits a wall. And once you see it, I think you won't ever look at this company the same way ever again. In the next few minutes, you'll see exactly what D Wave is doing right now, what the market's missing, and what I'm watching before I make my next move. Now, if you're new to the channel, hey, what's up? My name is Rick Orford. I've been trading since 1999, and no, I'm not a financial advisor. That is a good thing because I break down the numbers so retail investors like us can make smarter, more confident decisions with our money. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. And you all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by almost six times. Go to fool.com slash Rico to get your 10 stock picks right now. D-Way was founded in 1999 and is one of the pioneers in quantum computing. They're headquartered in California, but they also operate in both in Canada and the States. D-Wave is considered the grandfather of commercial quantum computing because, well, they are the first company to sell a commercial quantum computer. D-Wave builds computers designed to solve extremely complex optimization problems, the kind where there's millions or even billions of possible outcomes. Think of planning shipping routes across massive oceans. A classical computer might take years to identify the most efficient path, but a quantum system from D-Wave could narrow it down in hours or even minutes. D-Wave's primary customers today are the big companies, enterprises, and government agencies. You know, they're in manufacturing, logistics, financials, pharmaceuticals, and even the defense industry, including companies like uh, Volkswagen and Lockheed Martin. And instead of only selling machines, D-Wave is also offering cloud access through its Leap service. And this is making quantum computing far more accessible and affordable to its customers. So D-Wave isn't just a hardware story, it's a recurring revenue and platform story, which matters a lot if you're thinking about long-term upside. The company was once also at the center of controversy in the industry because it focused on quantum annealing Rather, rather than the general purpose gate model that's used by Google, Microsoft, and IBM. What's the difference? Well, without getting too technical, gate model quantum computing uses a precise program to solve any type of problem. So let's call it a general purpose approach. On the other hand, quantum annealing finds optimal solutions by letting the system settle into the best answer. So its primary purpose is to solve optimization problems. So the gate model is kind of like a fully programmable supercomputer that could, in theory, do anything, while annealing is kind of like a specialist machine built to hunt for the best possible answer as fast as possible. And naturally, D-Wave's approach led to many debates and criticisms about the scalability of their technology. I think it's right, right? Some say quantum annealing is limited to only specific problems, but a few years ago, D-Wave announced a platform that combines both annealing and gate model quantum computing, which basically ended all of these debates once and for all. Now, if they can execute on both of those approaches, they're no longer defending their own niche, they're potentially expanding their total addressable market in a very big way. But let's talk about what really matters to us as retail investors and look at D-Wave's recent stock performance.
Last time I covered D-Wave stock, the stock was trading around $29. The stock is now down 23% from my last coverage, currently trading around $22. But the stock is up about 167% year to date and 730% in the last 52 weeks. So even after this pullback, anyone who bought a year ago and is still holding is sitting on a massive gain, which tells you that the long-term investors often win. But can the stock recovery? Well, can it hit $50, $60, or even $70 next year? Well, this all came up in my Discord channel recently, and it's normal. Because if you're thinking about buying, selling, or just holding, you do need to understand what's driving the stock today. Earlier this month, D-Wave announced that its Advantage 2 quantum computer is now up and running at Davidson Technologies headquarters in Huntsville, Alabama. The system should support mission-critical government problems in defense and aerospace that classical computers just struggle to handle. And this milestone expands D-Wave's partnership with Davidson as they explore quantum uses in radar detection, logistics, AI, and even national security. So it means that real defense-related workloads are starting to touch D-Wave systems, which is the kind of validation that early tech or early stage tech companies just can't wait for. D-Wave also just wrapped up a major cleanup of its capital structure by fully redeeming all of its public warrants that were tied to its common stock. The process began on October 20th when the company announced that every outstanding public warrant would need to be exercised by November 19th or redeemed for just one penny each. And by the deadline, Investors exercised about 4.7 million warrants, and that converted them into about 6.9 million shares and gave D-Wave around $54.6 million in fresh new cash. With this complete, or this redemption complete, uh, D-Wave now has no public warrants outstanding, which they say simplifies their capital structure and reduces future dilution risk as they continue scaling their quantum computing efforts. And this increases their total share count, 6.9 million shares, and it creates a measurable amount of dilution for existing shareholders. Since all the warrants are gone, there's no more risk of future dilution of this batch, and the cash that they just raised can help offset the impact if they use it effectively to grow the business. I mean, makes sense, right? They took a hit now by diluting shareholders today, but they removed a big overhang that could have pressured the stock down the line and locked in real cash on the balance sheet that they can now deploy into R&D, sales, and growth instead of wondering when those warrants will ever come due. Now, before we continue, we should see if the stock price makes sense at these levels because the story on paper it's got to justify this wild price action that we're seeing on the chart. D-Wave recently released its third quarter financials on November 6th and reported that revenue doubled to $3.7 million from the same period last year. And bookings for the third quarter grew 3% to $2.3 million. D-Wave also reported that it closed over $12 million in additional bookings after the end of the third quarter. So the sales pipeline is growing faster than the reported revenue, which is exactly what you want to see in an early stage, high growth enterprise focused name. Net loss though was 140 million, up 517% compared to the same period last year. But wait, this figure isn't as bad as it seems because 121.9 million of this was purely an accounting adjustment related to those warrant liabilities. So in trader language, a big chunk of that ugly net loss is non-cash and non-recurring, which means the headline number looks scarier than the actual operating reality is. And it's a one-off adjustment. And that's why I'm always saying to look under the hood, not just at the headline EPS. And then there's some tailwinds, of course, that might help push D-Wave stock higher. In January, for example, D-Wave partnered with Carasoft to expand its reach in the government sector. This deal lets them offer their quantum computing services through major procurement channels such as NASA and other contract vehicles. D-Wave also got the awardable 
vendor status on the Department of Defense's Tradewinds marketplace. And this just means that it got easier for defense agencies to buy their quantum computing services. So all of that friction between a government buyer wanting their tech and actually being able to pay for it just went down, which is a big deal for long, for long sales cycle enterprise deals like what D-Wave has. Another growth catalyst for D-Wave is the push to expand federal support for quantum technology. Just a year ago, or almost a year ago, senators introduced the National Quantum Initiative uh, Reauthorization Act, which includes a proposed $2.7 billion budget spread over five years. There's also a $2.5 billion funding proposal from the Department of Energy Quantum Leadership Act of 2025. If approved, this could boost national investment in quantum research and create more opportunities for companies like D-Wave to work with government partners. But even if these bills don't pass exactly as proposed, it's still clear that there is momentum that's building up in quantum computing. So from a macro point of view, there's a lot of things to be excited about, and D-Wave doesn't have to create demand from scratch. All they have to do is capture a slice of budgets that are already growing. But the big question is whether they can turn that positioning into consistent, scalable revenue. And of course, there's another side of the story, the risks to the business, like any other company, D-Wave, they have their fair share, right? First is their approach to the technology, the debate that annealing systems are less flexible and only cater to certain problems, well, it's still up. While D-Wave did announce a new platform that includes the gate model quantum computing, their primary approach is still quantum annealing. So they're still seen by many as a specialist player, not a full stack general purpose quantum platform. And that perception matters because well, imagine you're a big buyer and you're deciding where you're going to want to place your long-term bets. Who do you go with? Also, DARPA's quantum computing benchmarking initiative leaves out D-Wave systems. And that suggests that their quantum annealing approach isn't part of the agency's priorities right now. But it doesn't prevent them from pursuing government work. But it does show you that DARPA is currently focused, or at least more focused, on other quantum technologies. If, if D-Wave doesn't continue expanding into gate model systems, they could face limits in accessing certain government contracts and funding programs. But even so, this doesn't look like a long-term risk for the company, especially now that they have began, begun to move into the gate model, uh, computing model, alongside their annealing approach. So they still have time to pivot deeper into what the broader ecosystem is wanting and favoring. They just need to execute, not just announce roadmaps. Another major and obvious risk is the gap between revenue and valuation, right? D-Wave currently has a price to sales ratio of 917. That is insanely high um, and unsustainable. Price to sales ratio implies that this high, it implies that the company generates very little revenue relative to its valuation. And it's true. And it usually signals either severe financial trouble or extreme speculation. For traders, that just means that any disappointment in growth, margins, or contracts can tr trigger brutal downside because there's almost no fundamental floor yet. And don't forget that D-Wave's customer concentration is, is another risk that many of us ignore. Their partnership, sure, with Karasoff and the awardable status with the Department of Defense, it's great, right? It opens the doors to government clients. But having access doesn't translate into meaningful sales, at least not automatically. Now, D-Wave does claim that its technology is utilized by some of the largest organizations, including Lockheed, Volkswagen, and NEC. But if only a handful of large customers account for most of their revenue, Losing even one could seriously damage their top line and bottom line. And if that happens, that could trigger an instant sell-off long before anyone has any time to sort out the details. So this is just a name you can't not just buy and forget. You have to watch the customer updates, the contract announcements, and renewal activity very closely if you're in the trade. So with all that, I know you want to know, is D-Wave stock 
a buy at these levels. Well, here's where something gets really interesting, right? A consensus among 11 analysts rate D-Wave stock a strong buy with a high target price of $48. That's very close to $50, right? And it suggests as much as 140% potential upside from the stock's recent closing price. And the average score is 4.73 and has remained almost unchanged, or it has remained unchanged in the last three months. This is very rare. A near perfect score from 11 analysts with this much upside and no profit yet? And at this point, I see why, right? D-Waves hit some meaningful milestones from activating the Advantage 2 system for government use to cleaning up its capital structure with the, the full warrant redemption, although at the cost of a little dilution today. The company now faces a clearer financial path plus a stronger reach within federal clients. And for investors like us, this remains a high potential high volatility story that rewards patience and disciplined expectations. Now, if you followed me long enough, you know that I invest in profitable businesses, right? They make net profit. But I have to say this case is very compelling. But what do you think? Are these catalysts enough to turn things around? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're there, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe because it'll help others find the video. It'll support the channel and you won't miss out on any of my future deep dives. Well, folks, that's it for me today. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.